you're in a week between these games and how has this training week been? Yeah, it's been an important week. Uh, of course, we're coming off a disappointing result last weekend at home, which we haven't had too many. Probably our, our first real disappointing one at home that we've had in, in quite a while. So it's been an important week to get the group back together again, to try and recover as many bodies as we can, because we are in a challenging moment in terms of injuries and to get the group together and, and get some important work done. So that's what we've done. We're now looking forward to Brentford. It's, it's on to the next game. The next game is always an opportunity. This is one to really look forward to against a really good club and um, hopefully a good away there for the fans and we're going to try and deliver the best performance we can. You've always kind of said that regardless of the result the weekend before, the players come in, the group come in, you know, staff included as well, and it's a new Monday, isn't it? You know, yeah. Whether it's a win or, or a loss, and is that still very much the case? Yeah, yeah, I think that's... You know what I believe in and what it always has to be. Of course, you look back on the game, of course, you reflect on it, you have your process, things that we could have done better, moments that um, we could improve. But you have to go on to the next game. There's there's no time in football to dwell on it for too long because the next game's coming. And certainly in this division, we know that the next game every week is going to be a big, big challenge. And we've got one this weekend. So, yeah, it's it's about looking forward once we've gone through the process of identifying you know, where the game wasn't where we want it to be. It's about looking to the next one and, and all the opportunities that we'll have at Brentford and all the challenges that we'll have at Brentford and, and dealing with them. And talking about the positives that you take from the game, it sounds very simple, but is it about basically doing them over a prolonged period of the 90 minutes, you know, seeing more of it? Because as you say, there are things to identify that, that you want to continue. Yeah, it's a balance of both. Look, I think in reality, we've had two games now where... You know, some poor moments have gone against us. We've probably, we've conceded two goals against Everton in the first half that are, you know, are stripped of anything to do with, you know, tactics or the flow of the game or systems or individuals or details. Or, or it's just t two really poor goals from our point of view in terms of defending our box and, and two goals that probably, you know, if we concede, you're probably not going to get anything from the game. So, um, of course, you look at those, you address if there's any trends, anything that we need to identify, but you don't want to, that to be the only thing you take from the game so you have to take the other bits as well and, and some of that is things that we're doing well moments and uh you know passages that if went very slightly differently could have went our way and could have got us in the ascendancy in the game and also things that we could have done better outside of the goals and you know that might be our, our response in, in the second half in a really difficult scenario how we can manage to to muster up the performance that we want and um it's looking at the game in a whole of course we know you know when you have a couple of goals that we did they're probably a little bit in, in isolation to the flow of the game. So you have to address those, but more so also look at the bigger picture and, and try and be as consistent as you can, try and do as many good things in the football match as you can, try and correct the things that we're not doing as, as well as we possibly can and, and go to the next game. And what do you make of Brentford? Yeah, I think they're, they're doing very well, no doubt about it. I think their, their home form has been very good. Uh, they've created, you know, I think the third most amount of chances in, in the league at home. They've created a lot. Of course, they scored five goals last time out against Wolves. They've got a lot of different ways to score a goal. Um, they've evolved their style a little bit this year as well and, and you know, probably build out from the back a little bit more while still also being a team who are very good at, you know, putting bodies in your box and making you defend your box and open play and in, in set play situations. So they're a dangerous team. But of course, like, like every team, you always identify the areas where you think you can hurt them, the spaces where you think you can be dangerous and, and ways that we think we can get something from the game. So um, we, we followed that process and, and now we look forward to going to London, supporters behind us and, and trying to deliver a, a performance that gets us a result. Not necessarily from a tactical point of view, but are you saying then do you see differences uh, between how they approach games home and away? Um, no, I think, look, anyone who's, who's studied Brent for a while, there's differences sometimes in terms of how they approach it against the biggest teams in the league and against the other teams. They, they very often change shape when they go to the to the biggest teams. Um, but I think the reality is for, for most teams in the division, especially, you know, the teams probably in the in the bottom half of the table more commonly, is that your home games are your, your times always where you're going to have more dominance in the game, the crowd behind you and you know, that's natural for us as it is natural for them. So we know at home they, they manage to put teams, especially under a lot of pressure and they put a lot of balls in your box and they get a lot of bodies in your box and you have to see that off. But having said that, they, again, have mixed that this year and they're also doing some some really good things with the ball. So they're they're a strong team. I'm sure they'll look at us and see some things that, that we're doing really well that we can give them a challenge with as well. Um, and it should be a good game. It's one to look forward to. Everyone in the league is is a challenge. Everyone is an opportunity, and, and we've got another one on Saturday. People say things like good times to score, bad team, bad times to concede. Sorry, but 
the fast starts that Brentford have made, do you identify any sort of areas and times and phases in this game that, that are key, potentially? Yeah, I think you can do. It's pretty obvious. I'm sure everyone who's played in the in the last few weeks against them has identified it. It's another thing trying to to stop it. So there's no doubt they've had you know they've had world record breaking probably starts to the game. But they're also very good on on kickoffs at half time and they're very good at kickoff you know after they concede a goal. And I think that probably just strips down to the fact that you know they have phases and moments of the game where they can go direct, be super aggressive on second ball, get the ball wide and put it in your box and put a lot of bodies in your box. And if you defend one phase, they can recycle it and put it in your box again, make you defend a second phase. So there's going to be periods like that in the game. They've done well off of making the start of the game a period like that against certain opposition and to do well against them, you're going to have to see some of them periods off. So that's uh, that's our challenge. The start will be one of them if if they take kickoff or when they take kickoffs in the game. But it's not just about that. It's knowing that there'll be other periods of the game where we have to stand up really strong and defend our box well. And, uh, you know, we, we know we'll have, you know, we believe we'll have our periods in the game as well. Um, so it's about trying to capitalise on our periods and, and stand up with real strength on their periods. And away from this specific fi uh, fixture, we had the positive news at the start of the week, new contract for Leif Davis, and uh, it's been a good signing, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, it's of course been a really positive signing for the club on all aspects. He's, um, you know, he's developed really well. He, at the time, was, you know, probably a different type of signing for a, a League One club in terms of that was a good investment for a team who were in League One, but we always felt that the talent was there and we trusted our, our development programme and the exposure we were going to give him the games to develop a footballer that would be, you know, able to go way beyond that level. And he's, he's developed well over the couple of years, stepped up to the Championship last year, stepped up to the, to the Premier League this year. So he's still young for a defender. He's still really in his third season of football, mm. third season in a different division. So he's learning all the time. There's been some good moments this year. There's been some moments where you can do better. I think that's you know pretty typical of so many of the players and, and where we're at. But um, he continues to want to get better, and we're really happy to have him here for for the for the future and keep working with him. And, and we feel that there's there's still a lot to come from him. Is that a nice feeling as a manager? You know, the coaches probably share it as well. But not just that you're signing a player who's at that level now, but a young defender who can continue to develop, and you enjoy working with him in that sense. Yeah, we've got lots of players in the squad. We know that. We've got lots of players in the squad who are, you know, for the young players that we've we've signed or brought to the club who are stepping into the Premier League. There's not many young players getting as much exposure as they are here. If you look at, you know, Liam and Omari or even Jack Clark or Jacob, probably boys in that category in terms of young British players getting incredible exposure in the Premier League and all doing some good things. Um, and we believe we'll get stronger if they have the right mentality and stick on the right path. Um and also for the other players, we know that, you know, pretty much every week we've had players making Premier League debuts. Last week it was Cameron Burgess, Harry Clark. We've got loads of players who've made maybe two, three, four, five of the eight maximum Premier League appearances in their career. So I think it would be natural if you can keep your mindset in the right way that the more games you play and you accumulate the experience, then you've got a chance to improve. So if it, and I do trust our mindset will stay in the right direction. So... It gives us a great chance to improve not just the young players here, but also the the senior players who are, um, you know, maybe really trying to establish themselves at this level.